All right, so number 1A is the easier one of the, whatever that is, five or so questions. We have at time zero, a parachutist falls vertically from rest. That implies that the initial velocity is zero. That's important. From rest from a helicopter, which is hovering at a height of 550 meters above the ground. That is actually irrelevant at this point because we're just gonna talk about the speed that it reaches in three seconds. So the parachutist who is modeled as a particle falls for three seconds. Modeled as a particle would kind of just make it easier to calculate uh, you know, the exact position. So a picture a human being condensed in a particle. Uh, the parachutist falls for three seconds before her parachute opens. While she is falling and before her parachute opens, she is modeled falling with this acceleration due to gravity. So this, for this question, we just use the, uh, these are called kinematic equations. And you can work this out and you will see that this one is very, very easy to uh, confirm. These are the kinematic equations. There are five, um, also sometimes called SUVAT equations, depending on how you learned it. It's basically just that your initial velocity plus your acceleration allowed to accelerate over some amount of time, uh, that will give you your new velocity. So picture almost like a vehicle traveling five meters per second. But if I'm also accelerating two meters per second every second, that's why acceleration is meters per second squared, five meters per second plus two meters per second every second, if I allowed myself to accelerate at that rate for say four seconds, you'll see that when you solve this, it's almost like saying I'm going to gain eight meters per second. So this is just a simple equation to uh, figure out the new velocity given any initial velocity plus the known acceleration. Now it's important to also note that this only works these kinematic equations only work when acceleration is constant and gravity is one of those uh, situations where acceleration is constant. Another reassuring thing, remember this was just a random example so you can ignore that. Um, we solve that, notice the units cancel out and I'm left with a value of 30 meters per second. So basically any object independent of mass, okay, things actually accelerate at the same rate if there is no air resistance. We say that in three seconds, any object would basically have gained uh, up to a speed, it would be up to a speed of 30 meters per second. So that is question A solved. And really it's kind of just a plug and chug. V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. In this case, from rest uh, implies that our initial velocity is zero. All right, now for part B and C, it's basically one combined question if you ask me. Uh, this is sort of the challenge out of, out of this whole problem one, I would say. Sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the parachutist from zero to T. Now this capital T we don't really know what it is yet. Basically, it's like saying, we don't know how long this parachutist will actually be in the air. So we're just gonna extend our X axis. And we don't know how long that parachutist is going to be in the air, but we know that it will be, you know, say it's 100 seconds. You could make that T equals 100. And then we would know to make our scale go to 100, but we don't know it. And when we don't know something, we're gonna leave it as a variable. So let's just see what we can start graphing. If speed is on my Y axis, but time is on my X axis, we can already graph the first section of this free fall. The first section of this free fall, we basically found out that in three seconds, this parachutist accelerated from zero to 30. So this is just gonna be a bit of a sketch because you don't really need it to be a precise graph. You can actually just do the math with it later. So notice it's a straight line. Notice it has slope. 
the slope is the rate of change in speed over the change in time, right? That's rise over run. There's a lot of ways to think about this. Slope is rise over run. What's the rise? It's the change in speed. What's the run? It's the change in time. Oh wait, I know what that is. Change in speed over change in time, that's acceleration. So believe it or not, this slope here is acceleration. Go ahead and calculate the slope. You will get a slope of 10 meters per second squared. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the slope, I'll erase this in a second, but the slope would literally give you the acceleration due to gravity. That's probably come up at other points in your in this course. But let's just take what we need to know here. So we went from 0 to 30 in 3 seconds. The next thing that happens is we decelerate 12 meters per second squared, and it's allowed for 2 seconds to pass. So in the next 2 seconds... I don't need to write S, I should just do this. Um, in the net, over the span of the next two seconds, we see a deceleration. I can do the same thing as before. My new velocity will just be my starting velocity plus my acceleration times the amount of time I allow it to accelerate. This will solve quite easily here. I'm initially, now remember, I'm just analyzing sort of between 3 and 5 seconds. So initially, I'm traveling 30 meters per second plus a deceleration. So I'm giving it a negative symbol. What's most important is negatives and positives are just opposite. If one refers to, you know, speeding up, then the other would have to refer to slowing down. In this case, negative a negative value refers to slowing down. And we're allowing that acceleration for a span of two seconds. And let's go to town. Seconds and seconds, one of them would cross off there. I'm left with 30 minus 24. That will give me a final answer of, I'll go back to blue here, that will give me an answer of six meters per second. So once again, this is a kinematic equation. I would be shocked if those weren't provided for you for your tests or your, your exams. So let's graph this section of the graph now. There's basically three sections of this graph. We've already done the first. This one now, I'm going from 30 down to, let's say six is here. I'm going from 30, a speed of 30, down to a speed of six in a span of two seconds, which I've already kind of marked out. So now, after five seconds of total falling, I am down to a speed of six meters per second. Not easy. Okay, if you want to go ahead and calculate the slope of this line, if you want to go ahead and calculate the slope of this line, what do you think the slope would be? The slope is the rise over run. That's the acceleration. Your slope here in orange should give you a value of negative 12 because that is the acceleration or in this case deceleration thus having a negative value. So that's the two segments. The final segment of this graph would be how the parachutist is just sort of coasting now and we say coasting because now the parachutist you reach sort of what is called a terminal velocity where your velocity is no longer changing. Imagine floating down in a parachute you're not really speeding up or slowing down you've sort of reached your uh, maximum velocity your minimum velocity sorry well maximum if your parachute is deployed so the rest of this graph believe it or not would just be a flat line now be careful this graph is a speed versus time graph so a flat line does not imply that the object is not moving right the object is moving at six meters per second for the rest of its journey. So don't think of a flat line in this case uh, as no movement. If it were a distance time graph, this would imply not moving. But flat in this case refers to just constant speed. Think about being on cruise control in a vehicle. So now the question is, just how far does this line go? What will be this final time? Will it go on further? That's kind of your mission to figure out. This next part is a little confusing, and it might take you some outside research 
to confirm this, but I can assure you that it's not overly complicated to uh, research. Basically, a long story short, to solve this last part, you need to understand one concept. The area underneath a graph, I'm just gonna tidy this up, make it a little smaller. The area underneath this graph is actually equal to distance. And making a very long story short, you can think about it as the area of a square. If I have S, speed and time, the area beneath a speed time curve, the area beneath a speed time curve is distance. You should have, whoops, you should have at some point seen this formula in one way or another, because that is basically just saying speed is distance over time. So if speed is distance over time, we can also rearrange it and say that speed times time is distance. So it sounds a bit wacky, but this entire area, if I added all this area up, that would actually give me the total distance traveled, or you could say the total displacement. So long story short, this is area. I can actually just say that area. If it's a speed time graph, if it's a velocity versus time graph or a speed versus time graph. So just be careful on that. You might need to review that concept. So why do I need to know that? The total distance traveled is 550 meters. That means that my total area under this curve should be 550 meters. Now, how's that gonna help me? Well, I have enough information to calculate these areas here. And then all I really need to ask myself is, okay, what's the remaining area in here? I know that the total area should add up to 550. So that is my next mission. The total area should be 550. Let's go start solving that. Okay, the area of a triangle, let's start with this one on the, I'm gonna work sort of left to right. Okay, this triangle, three times 30 base times height divided by two. This area would be 45. So basically in that first drop where you go from zero to 30, your acceleration, you have traveled or she has traveled 45 meters. Next area I would have here and here. Okay, the base of this triangle is two seconds, two times, and the height would be 24 because it's from six to 30. So two times 24 divided by two, base times height divided by two would give me 24. Okay, the area of this one would be two times six, which is 12. So long story short, you basically can figure out in the first five seconds of travel, you can add up and figure out how far you've traveled in the first five seconds. So you've traveled actually 81 meters in the first five seconds. But now it's basically just as easy as this, okay? 81 meters, that's how far you've traveled up to here. But now we wanna know how long are you traveling? How long are you traveling? if you're gonna travel, what was it, 550 meters. So you're about to travel an extra what in this last area? In this final area of the graph, you need to travel a remaining 469 meters, right? I can fill this question mark in. What's missing is 469 meters, right? I just went 550 minus 81. It's almost like math class if you were to find the unknown variable there. So I still need to travel 469 meters in this final area. So that means this final area is actually equal to 469 meters of traveling. We're almost done here. How can I figure out T? Well, total time. I know now enough information to solve the sort of like the length and width of this area. I know enough now to find this 
uh, distance here, basically in this rectangle. Okay, this has a this rectangle has a height of six and an unknown length, so it's almost like saying six times something is going to equal the area of that box. What's the answer there? 78.16. So this box, I'm going to erase some of this and I will uh, put it back in a second here. Just going to erase a little bit of this, make it a little tidier. Okay, I have this box. The height is six because I know that's sort of like my coasting speed. So I have a, you know, a height in my box of six. The area should be 469. What is this length? You should be able to basically calculate that and get a side measure of 78.16 repeating. 78.16 repeating. That means that this time span from the five second mark to here, the five second mark to here is 78.16 seconds, which means the total travel time would have to be 78.16 plus five seconds. So I'm gonna erase a little bit down here. So the total travel time, basically the, the cruising part of this final section of your graph would last 71, sorry, 78.16 seconds, and it's repeating. But remember, before all that happened, we had five seconds of traveling. It says to round to the nearest whole number, so you get an answer of 83 seconds of total traveling. Total traveling. Now, I realize I made a small mistake here. I've kind of gone ahead and answered part C. Part B, I'll show you quickly tidied up. It's exactly what we had without all the math intruding it and without actually calculating this value because it doesn't really ask you to calculate this value T uh, in part B. So that's how you would calculate the total time. It's a bit confusing. It has, to a, lot, has a lot to do with knowing the area um, and then working backwards. Area is equal to distance. That's a bit confusing if you haven't learned that yet. You can pause this if need be, but I'm going to show you part B. All right, part B without the extra crowding of information would just be a speed time graph. Okay, it ends at that unknown time T. We know in the first three seconds, the first three seconds, I reach a speed of 30. Okay, and you could put meters per second for speed. Okay, and it goes from zero to 30 in the first three seconds. In the next two seconds, right, we drop the speed down to six. And then from there on, we hold a constant speed and abruptly stopping. Uh, once you hit the ground. So this would be, just be a sketch of the graph before we implemented all the, the scary math. So this is your sketch of the, the situation.